Burley So. Hello everybody and welcome back to Burley So. I'm your host Purified and today I've got a really awesome project. It is a Nintendo DS cartridge holder. It'll hold regular DS cartridges, 3DS, uh, whatever you want it to. So let's check it out. All right, so the materials that are going to be using, I had basically laying around. I had some, a uh, couple different materials. The Star Wars material right here I had. Um, I'd be able to use that for the backside, the outside shell. I had some extra flannel from another project that I'm going to use. I'm going to sandwich two layers between that and use that as more of a padding to protect the the cartridges give it a little padding and then this is going to be the inside it's a nice nylon material pretty slick looking and then I did have to go out and buy this right here which is the thickest gauge vinyl that they had at uh, the fabric store a big old roll like this 72 inches by a yard three feet um, was like five bucks with a coupon so that's what we're gonna work with today and let's jump right in and show you how to get started all right, so what we're gonna do first is cut out our pieces. And it's handy to have some Taylor's chalk, nice straight line, straight edge, and a cutting wheel and a cutting mat. Uh, projects like this, I use the cutting mat a lot because obviously you need a surface to cut on, but it helps me square up my material by using the lines when I'm cutting. Now, as far as the measurements go, it, it's really up to you. It depends on how big you wanna make it. This particular one that I made was enough to hold about 54 cartridges and it, the end product was 15 and a half inches long or wide I should say so the width right here 15 and a half inches you go 16 um, 17 and then trim it down later and I said I recommend making it a little bit bigger than what you intend because you can always trim it down and square it up and I'll go through that as we as we need to in the in the tutorial here so as I said my end product was about 15 and a half inches wide by 21 inches long and what I'm doing is just squaring up my initial piece of material this is going to be the outside of the case and I'm going to use this to go ahead and help measure and cut the other two pieces that I need which will be the flannel in the middle and then that blue nylon which is going to be the inside of the case which you'll see every time you open it up and pull out a cartridge. Um, I'm cutting it a little bit bigger here as you can see and you're more than welcome to leave it large. I think throughout the video here you'll see that I trim it up a few times. It ends up kind of being a waste of time and also when you're sandwiching materials together um, they have a tendency to shift a little bit so you always want to make it a little bit bigger I think than what your outcome is going to be. That way you can always trim it down at the end. You can always take off material. It's really hard to add back material without sewing and making it look crummy. So I'm just matching up these, these two pieces and then this is my third piece and this is basically how it's going to all fit together. Um, like I said, the Star Wars is going to be the outside and then the blue vinyl will be, or the blue uh, nylon will be the inside. And there you have that part right there so now we've got our three pieces cut and then eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this vinyl to cut strips out of and that's what's gonna hold our cartridges in place so they'll be able to slide in there we'll make a number of pockets and they'll go across like that and that's how you'll be able to hold your DS cartridges and the nice thing about that too is you'll also be able to see them so the kids can look at you know whatever game they want and then as we work through the project, you'll see that I'm going to work with two pieces and leave the third aside, which is the outside. And then ultimately at the end, too, we're going to bind this together with a bias tape. Um, but I'll show you all that step by step. And here's a quick picture of the a quick video of the, the bias tape, just quarter inch blue. So as I said before, it's okay to leave these brown and blue pieces. A little bit bigger I spent a lot of time trimming it down and I did some other quilting or sandwiching before and I realized and I forgot that it's a good idea to leave um, your pieces a little bit bigger and then just trim them down later because they do kind of move a little bit and warp and 
uh, shift and you end up having to trim it down at the end anyway but that's what I did so anyway um, I'm peeling this Star Wars fabric away and what we're gonna do is we're gonna work just with the flannel and the blue which is basically the inside I don't want to do any work with that blue piece on there uh, I mean the Star Wars piece because I want to keep as few stitches on that as possible I want it to look clean so what I'm going to do here is just pin these two pieces together and then what I'm going to end up doing is basting these two pieces together so I'll be pulling that stitch out at the end of the project but I want to make an X in the middle of this project and then I'm going to sew um, w one of the legs out with this this type of stitch which is easy to pull out it's a basting stitch and I'm going to start at the middle and I'm going to sew out to each corner and that's going to keep my material if I keep going left to right the material can shift left to right or it can warp in a particular fashion so if I if I go out from the center or versus going around um, the outside I feel that the material when sandwiched together holds its shape a little bit better so that's what I'm doing is just a basic basic basting stitch it's a nice wide stitch you can get a stitch ripper in there and it's real easy to pull that stitch out later on uh, so you don't have that aesthetic in the background of your product uh, your, your final project so there we go I went ahead and I sewed my X legs out from the center and I'll show you what that looks like right here and now you can see that um, the material is held together that way. You could probably use a spray adhesive as well. Um, I just did this because it was simple. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to figure out uh, our vinyl strips. Um, I'm just going to cut a little piece off right here that's about the width of our, our, our project so far. And then we're going to go ahead and cut the strips and the strips are what we're going to use to make our pockets. And you can see I cut the vinyl with the paper on, and I did that for a reason. And the reason is when you're sewing on the vinyl, the foot, the presser foot, has a tendency to grab. And that doesn't let your project flow through smoothly while you're sewing, but the paper will allow it to slide. So. I'm going to go ahead and keep the paper and I'm going to use that to cover our vinyl and I'll show you how I do that. And right now I'm just going to square up the vinyl. Um, it doesn't have to be the exact same size as our project but I do want it square so that when I'm cutting my, my strips I know that I'm cutting them equally and annularly. Alright so I'm finishing up our strip and the strips I'm making the width of the project probably about 16 inches by an inch and 5 eighths thick. So there you have all the strips that I cut out. I only need about six of them. I think I cut out a couple extras. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make a cover to finish off the bottom of the strip. And that's just some other material that I had laying around. Some scrap that was big enough that matched this color scheme. And those I'm going to right now cut at two inches. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make like a homemade bias tape out of that. We're going to go ahead and fold them in half and then we're gonna run a stitch real close to the old, uh, opening of the fold and to do that I just take my needle and I can move it over to the right as close to the edge as I can and I'll show you how to do that real quick um, I'm choosing my right state, uh, straight stitch and I can go into the settings and then I can go ahead and take that needle and move it all the way over to the right so it's going to be pretty close to about an eighth of an inch from the end of the fabric to the stitch that we're going to sew. And it's just going to be a simple straight stitch. Um, you could use a basing stitch if you wanted. So I went ahead and sewed that. And now I'm going to go ahead and fold that in half and iron it. And I'm going to do it just like a bias strip. So on a bias strip, one leg is shorter than the other. And the shorter leg is going to be the leg with the, the seam on it and it's going to be like a little v-shape or like a bias strip and that's what's going to hide and finish off the bottom of our vinyl and I'll show you what that what I mean by that right now so we've got the little 
kind of bias strip that we've made and now we can take this piece of vinyl and just slide it in there and the, the stitch of this little bias strip that we made um, is going to be to the inside of our project so you won't be able to see it so it's going to be the nice clean outside and this will just fit right uh, the vinyl will fit right inside this and we'll be able to sew it and um, it should look pretty slick here I'll give you an idea what it looks like on our project it's gonna look like that basically however the vinyl is gonna slide inside of there so that's gonna be the bottom of our pocket and then we're gonna do that for each pocket that we make and if you're a little confused right now it'll be a little bit more clear as I attach these I'll show you a little bit better but now I'm gonna go ahead and cut some strips of paper so that I can fit that over the vinyl so then when I'm sewing them on the foot won't catch up on the vinyl especially if it's hot or warm which it is in my work area up in the attic and I just slide that all in there like that and make sure it's all touching the bottom of our strip and straight and you can see also I have green tape there to mark where I'm gonna put these after I measured them um, and I'm gonna pin them in place so that they don't move and that way I can go ahead and basically pin out the whole project and then just sew it um, I measured from this is the top so the top of the vinyl that's open without that blue strip is gonna be the top of our project and I left enough space up for a DS cartridge to slide out so it's roughly the top of our vinyl strip is probably about an inch and a quarter inch and a half from the top of our project and you can decide that for yourself so now I'm gonna sew this on and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a basting stitch um, here I actually used a straight stitch just a regular one and it's gonna be hard it would be hard for me to get that out so th this aesthetic on this top row isn't perfect but I learned from my mistakes and this is like just something that I'm making without any plans or whatever so I have a tendency to screw up once in a while but I recommend using the basting stitch and you can see I sold everything together the paper the little bias strip that we made and then the vinyl and now we've got that all secured into place with our with our basting stitch and now I'm gonna move the tape so I measured down from the top on the distance that I wanted and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a ruler at the bottom of our row and then I'm gonna measure down roughly two and seven eighths inches uh, I calculated the width of our our strips here and then a space to pull the cartridge out and that's where I came up with the two and seven eighths and it works pretty good so I've got that marked and what I can do is I can just go ahead and lay this tape down and use that as a guide when I'm pinning on my next sets of strips and I t tape can curve and the longer you have a distance between two points the less straight it's gonna be so th for this application this is pretty perfect I can just lay my ruler down and make sure that it's straight and then I can go ahead and pin on our vinyl bias strip and paper combination and then go ahead and go back to the sewing machine once I have all these on and put our basting stitches on here and I'll show you why a basting stitch because we're gonna we're gonna do two other stitches later once we get these in place um, but then we're gonna finish pinning all these on and I'm gonna leave a reasonable space at the bottom of this so that when you roll it on we're gonna have a place for fasteners I'm gonna use velcro to connect it and you're gonna need a little space on the bottom to attach the velcro um, you might be able to get on another row it just depends upon how long you may you make your project you can make it as long as you want as wide as you want this is the size that I ended up while I was kind of prototyping this but uh, you know you can certainly change around the dimensions it's a beautiful thing about making projects like this it's all up to to what you want to do but now you can see I'm putting the paper in there and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in place and then we're gonna move on to the next part which will be um, sewing our project but before I do that I'll just show you what I was talking about a second ago about it's gonna roll up and we're gonna leave this bottom space for our velcro so there you go 
So now that I have them all pinned on, I'm going to go ahead and do what I mentioned earlier, which is do a basting stitch down the length of all of these to hold them in place. And then we're going to go ahead after this part and we're going to start making our little pockets that hold the cartridges in. And then once the pockets are done, that's pretty much the structure of our project. We'll be able to go ahead and pull out all the basting stitches that we've done and the material is not going to move around and then we can put it on our final our final touches. So I'll go ahead and move on to that next part after I show you a quick image of what this looks like with our basting stitch on it. So what we're going to do next is mark the edge of our product, uh, edge of our rows and mark our pockets for the DS chips to go in. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got an invisible ink marker. You could probably use chalk. I wouldn't use ink pen because that might not come out, but uh, I basically just marked the edge of our column here. And to calculate it, each pocket width is an inch and five eighths. So you have to take an inch and five eighths, figure out how, many, uh, how wide your project is, how many pockets you can fit in there, and then whatever the leftover is, um, you want to divide evenly on each side. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. And this is just the end of our, our pocket row, if you will. And I'm just using a simple straight stitch for this. And I'm starting at our little makeshift uh, bias tape. So basically it's upside down right now looking at it. And I just sewed a straight stitch from right before where the bias tape starts. I just drop the needle down and line it up with our mark. And then go straight across the vinyl till I reach the end of the vinyl and that's what it looks like. I've got the edge there and then I've also got one pocket that looks like so. So um, that gives you an idea of what that looks like. And the way I measured these out was very similar to the rows except for I didn't use tape because it was too long. I just took my straight edge, I lined it up against my initial markings and then I measured over the inch and five eighths on the bottom and now I'll measure over again an inch and five eighths on the top and this is with my invisible ink marker and it'll fade away. You may want to test it on your material too just to make sure. But uh, then I'm going to connect the two dots and I'm just going to draw um, a line on the plastic and on that little bias tape um, all the way down. And then I'm just going to go through my project and I'm going to keep doing that all the way until I get to the end of the row. And then we'll have all of our pockets sewed in for our DS chips. And I also want to add, as you're working through this, um, like I said, just start on one side and work your way all the way over to the other, and then you can just roll up your material as you're working through it. And now we've got our left edge done, and we've got all of our pockets sewed in. So now that we've got all of our pockets sewed in, I want to go ahead and clean up these, these edges here. I'm going to take all that off. So we're just going to pull the stitch back with a a stitch ripper until we hit our first seam that defines the pocket edge or the strip of pockets edge or whatever you want however you want to phrase it and I'm going to pull that back and then I'm simply just going to take a scissors and then I'm just going to trim that off and I'm going to go down the project and every row on both sides and clean up both of those row ends so that it looks nice and neat. And at this point, when I was making it, I hadn't determined what I was going to do yet to finish it off. I might have just left it with the plastic, and you can certainly do that. But what I ended up doing was um, doing a zigzag, a zigzag stitch on it. And I'll show you that next. But you can see here that I've got the rows all cleaned up on both sides. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of those basting stitches that we had put in earlier because we don't need those anymore. And we're gonna fi start finishing up the final steps of our D uh, Nintendo DS cartridge holder. So once we have the basting stitches out and you can even pull out the big X in the background, um, then I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this edge. And like I said, I didn't really know what to do with it. I could have left it, but I just wanted something on there. So I decided to do just a basic zigzag stitch just to give it a little more stability and uh, aesthetic value I guess um, the thing that you want to keep in mind is when you if you're gonna do this 
make sure that the edge of your zigzag stitch is on your stitch that's currently down because you don't want to make the pocket any smaller than it already is. So you don't want to go into your pocket when you're doing this, otherwise you're going to make it smaller um, than, than what it already is and you're not going to be able to fit a cartridge in there. So I just lined it up and this one's a little screwed up that I just showed you from some outtakes but uh, there you can see what it looks like. And now I've got them all done and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a stitch where we pull our basting stitches out. And the first one's going to be right along the very top of our mock bias strip that I made. And that's going to determine where the cartridge sits. So I'm just going to go down and I'm going to sew a straight stitch right across uh, the very top edge of the bias strip that's closest to the plastic. And it's going to be about maybe an eighth of an inch down from the plastic. And that's our first stitch that you're going to do, and you can see it right there. And that stops the cartridge from going down any further. So if you made your plastic a little bit too big or whatever, you can adjust where your cartridge sits. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to sew in these bottom here just for extra reinforcement. But all this has been done so far without, with supposedly without having the back of the fabric on. So the funny thing is, is I went to go show my family what it was going to look like all together, and I put the back on just to show them and I forgot to take it off and I started sewing and next thing you know it was all connected so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover it with a different piece of fabric I'm gonna cut it a new square which is all fine and good I could have made another one of these with the drop that was left over but it is what it is live and learn um, and it's okay if you cut you know if you're if, if that happens I mean it's sewing things happen it's the first project first time trying to figure this thing out so but and here if you do cut your piece now or if you're cutting a different piece if you did a similar thing it's okay to leave that piece a little bit bigger I did trim it down to size because it, it, it you know I, I, I wasn't thinking but if you left it bigger that's gonna be fine but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go sew in my other line on that bias strip, which is closest to the bottom of the bias strip. And then I'm going to sew on actually with the backing fabric on. That's going to keep the, backer, the backing fabric or the outside shell fabric from bowing or buckling or um, getting puffy. And I think it's also going to give it a little bit of structure for when you roll it up. It's going to have those kind of seams to work off of too. So. Um, that's why I'm doing that and then just for a general aesthetic look of the, the the case pockets it'll be nice with that double line on there um, and it'll be a little bit more sturdy too for when the kids are pulling the cartridges in and out but now I've done that and I've got the back the official backside sewn on I've got the inside rows complete and now it's time to go ahead and trim it down so that all the edges are nice and square and together and then we're gonna put on our bias strip border and we're just about done so I bought two bucks some quarter inch uh, bias tape double fold and I'm gonna go ahead and attach that and if you don't know how to do that it's a little tricky but it's pretty easy once you get a little practice I've got another video that you can check out on how to bind the edge of uh, raw raw material but we're putting that on and just to give you an idea what that will look like they'll fold right over and we're gonna have a nice clean bound edge so now we've got that complete and now we got to figure out how to attach it so we'll roll it up here and like I said I left that bottom part empty so that I could attach some velcro and it's gonna fold up kind of just like that so when the kids want to take it on a trip or whatever but I've just got some standard velcro that you buy uh, two or three feet at a time had some left over from a different project and I'm just gonna cut three strips and I'm gonna put them on what is the bottom of the case and these are this is adhesive and I like it because it's adhesive because I can place it where I want and then I can also go ahead later and put some stitches in it to give it some stability so that when you're attaching and um, detaching it it doesn't it doesn't stick and I'm also going with the fuzzy side of the velcro on this bottom inside of the, the, 
the the project just because it'll be protected um, if it's ever rolled up um, or hanging there the backside will be up but could be hanging against a wall or whatever and it won't fray this out and get it all goofy so I took the the velcro and I put it on and then I took the other adhesive strip and took those off and now I've kind of glued it all together now you can't just go rip this apart because the velcro is going to come right off you've got to hold down and separate the velcro by hand but by doing this I've placed where I need the velcro to be on the connecting side or the back side of the case so now I know where it's got to be and I can go ahead and put some stitches in these velcro pieces to hold them in place and that's what I'm going to do next and I'm just checking one more time to make sure that they line up and they do so we'll go ahead and this part's going to be easy and this is kind of all an afterthought I, I could have done this before maybe um, and not got the stitching on the back of the project but it, it doesn't look too bad and I'm just going to do one stitch on the right side of the strip and one stitch on the left side of the stri strip and it's just going to be a normal standard straight stitch the other the, the pieces that this velcro connects to are kind of in the middle of the project where the cassettes are I had to be a little bit more creative there to sew those in um, but basically what I did was I'm just gonna, I'm gonna find it here here you see the velcro um, I'm just gonna stitch where there's already stitches and you'll never be able to notice it so I kind of determined that all right if I take a couple of these cartridges out I can just go over the existing stitching that forms the pockets and stitch um, along that line because it's right where my velcro is and then I'll be able to uh, kind of hide it and I won't be sewing through any of the plastic pockets or anything like that. You'll have to figure yours out for yourself but this is a good idea I think to start with um, to kind of go for that. If it's between two pockets you're kind of golden because then you don't have to worry about it so much if it's between two rows but this happened to be right on the row so I'm just going along the existing the existing uh, stitching that I already have there for the pockets so that's gonna look good you won't be able to notice really anything at all so now that we're almost done here um, I had one more afterthought as I was making the project how about making it hangable on the wall instead of just this roll-up thing and that's the way we are actually keeping ours right now in our little kids area um, is I, so I took some of the bias tape that I had and I just cut a couple inch piece and I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch and make two loops on the top of it so that I can put some nails in the wall or, or whatever type of hanger you choose to, to do and I'll be able to um, hang it on the wall and that's the way we're using ours right now it's always up you can see what games there are kids can just pull out one put it back very accessible. My thing that you want to keep in mind is keep these loops equal in size and make sure you put a, a, a fair amount of stitching in there so that you know if it's gonna hang it doesn't it doesn't detach or come apart um, and, and just make sure that when it hangs it would be level. And that's basically the only consideration you want to make here when you're attaching these. So I'm just gonna finish up with this right now and really I think that's about it. So yeah, we took some old scrap materials, had to spend about seven bucks in new materials, and we got a really kick-ass DS cartridge holder. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you like what you saw. If you do, please subscribe. I'll have more videos coming out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. I'm Purified, and thanks everybody for watching Burley So.